Welcome back to the Tech Buyers Guru. Today we're going to be showing you how to install CryoRig's brand new H7 Quad Lumi CPU cooler. So without further ado, let's crack open the box and show you what's inside. Alright, we got the cooler out of the box here. What you see is the CryoRig H7, the fan pre-installed. It has a couple of cables hanging down. One is going to be pretty familiar to everyone, which is a fan cable. Uh, it's a four pin PWM header. The less common uh, cable for a fan, that is, is, is a USB connector. That's a USB 2.0 connector. That's to control your lighting. So notice that that cable is quite long. That's because typically you don't have USB headers near your CPU cooler. Uh, so you're going to have to uh, route that probably through the back of your case, <clears throat> underneath the motherboard, and then back through the bottom so it can attach to a USB header down near the bottom of the motherboard. Now the fact that this fan is connected to the heat sink is mostly for show. You actually have to disconnect it. You have to take it off for installation because you need access to a couple of screws at the bottom, one of which is blocked by the fan. I'll go ahead and take this off right now. The design of the uh, fins inside this heat sink is very unusual, kind of a uh, trademark of cryo rigs coolers. Very interesting design. Uh, whether or not it's effective uh, will remains to be seen. We will be providing some benchmark results, but it certainly looks cool. Also in the box, you get a number of uh, brackets. This is the back plate. This is used for both Intel and AMD. You just flip it over. Uh, one side's Intel, one side's AMD, and yes, this is AM4 compatible. This is CryoRig's first AM4 compatible cooler out of the box. The one thing we don't really like about this back plate is that it is plastic. And CryoRig relies on the plastic's uh, kind of uh, tensile nature here. You can bend it in your hand. It's using this as a spring. And we have concerns about this design over the long haul. This is the same type of design that CryoRig used on the original H7 it is, and it is not the design they use on their higher end H5 uh, and H1 uh, coolers. And I think that there may be a reason you don't use the uh, f na natural flexibility of plastic uh, as your spring for higher end coolers because of course over time plastic can probably fatigue. So, we're going to just note that, and you can pass judgment as you, as you wish. Also in the box is a front bracket. We're going to use the AMD bracket. There's a similar one in the box for uh, Intel. Uh, we're not going to show you that one right now because we're not going to be using it, but it's, it's a similar concept. And then you have uh, some screws, or really, uh, kind of bolts. So these, these bolts go through the back of the back plate, which we'll be showing you in a second. And you affix the front bracket using four thumb screws. Note these thumb screws have no indentation for a screwdriver. So this is completely done on the basis of your your finger strength, not a screwdriver. And we're betting that one of the reasons that it's done this way is because again we're using plastics. The, the plastic is a spring and if you were really to wrench down that plastic with a screwdriver, particularly a power screwdriver, you might break it. So CryoRig is compensating for that by not allowing you to screw down too hard on the, uh, on the plastic backplate. So, the next step is to actually uh, uh, fix these bolts through the backplate. We're using the AMD side and we've already looked at the manual. There's two sets of holes for AMD. They're labeled D and E. That's as opposed to A, B, and C on the other side for Intel. So there's lots of different sockets. Um, uh, that are that are being considered here, and E is for AM4. So we're going to push that bracket, that bolt through. Make sure it goes all the way in. Make sure we use E, the E hole, on all four corners. Note that you have to push that in, get it lined up. Okay, all four are, are lined up. They're all in E. So we're going to push. We're going to put this through the back of the motherboard. 
Ideally, this would probably be done with the case uh, on its feet, uh, but that makes it harder for us to show you what it looks like. So we're going to do it this way. Now, what's really strange about this setup is it doesn't use plastic spacers like most other coolers. So we end up having a uh, a mounting plate that goes through the back of the cake through the motherboard and kind of just floats there and then we drop this on top. It doesn't go all the way down because it kind of sits on this, these, these posts. Now one of my posts fell through the back of the motherboard that's what makes this a kind of a an awkward setup because as you're installing it you might lose a post. So there's my fourth post. Got to make sure it's fully lined up. Okay. So I take the thumb screws and I start screwing these down. Remember, there's no screwdriver involved here and in part I think that's because if you use a screwdriver you could snap that back plate. Now I've just lost one of my posts again. Went back through the back of the motherboard. There it is. So this is a design that we've seen, we've seen, uh, um, this is part of actually a roundup. We actually tested seven CPU coolers in this roundup. And there's another cooler that uh, uses a system similar to this where this is a floating bracket. Notice that this can move. It's, a, it's uh, uh, the other one is from Arctic. And so, you know, this is a system that some companies use. It's a little bit unnerving uh, versus others that lock in. So basically, this bracket is just floating and can kind of fall. It can sit on your capacitors there as you're working. Uh, it, it, it is not the most um, uh, confidence inspiring system. Okay, but basically the idea is once you get that cooler on top, it's going to cinch up and pull on that plastic back, uh, back plate, which acts as a spring. And you're going to push up against that CPU and, and, and get enough uh, uh, mounting, mounting tension on that CPU to give you a good bond, a good thermal bond. But we just want to point out that this is a, a relatively inexpensive mounting system. And the H7 Quad Lumi is not an inexpensive 120 millimeter cooler. So let's, just have that, let's let that be noted. For the record, okay, we're going to go ahead and put the the CP7 thermal grease or ther uh, you know uh, thermal interface material on here. This is really nice stuff, and uh, Cryo gives you a very generous amount in a nice tube. Makes it very easy to apply. We really like the idea of uh, tube versus like a little packet, uh, which is always messy and 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 basically hard to get uh, hard to judge the amount that you're applying. Whereas here I've kind of put a pea-sized amount and we're ready to drop that cooler on. Now this cooler does have a front and a rear, so we're going to make sure we get that right. This is the front where the fan will go. Remember my, my bracket here is just floating. i got to kind of pull it up to mount it. There's that screw that was pre-installed. These are the only screws in this whole mounting system. So they got one there. And one back here, you're going to need a pretty long screwdriver to reach that because otherwise you're going to hit this top plate. So let me make sure that those screws are actually going in. Yes, so that's not moving. Now this is going to pull that back plate up, up against the back of the motherboard. I'm checking that the bolts are actually in place underneath with my hand. So this is kind of, you know, one of these situations where you kind of wish you had three hands. I'm holding this case up, checking the bolts behind and I'm screwing this in all at the same time. So I'm going to keep screwing. Now there's no uh, spring uh, on these screws so you just kind of keep going until it stops and that, that stopped. That's not moving anywhere. Now this is that USB cable I was talking about. I'm actually going to thread it through the back because I want to attach it later on to a USB header in the back of the, uh, at the bottom of the motherboard. Now let's attach that fan. 
Here's the fan that I took off. Remember, it comes installed, but you need to take it off. I'm going to attach it to my CPU fan header first. Okay. Drop it down, get that cable out of the way. Now, one of the really nice things about the CryoRig H7 is that it has phenomenal clearance. Look, at it's not even close to the RAM. It's also quite low. This is only, I think, 145 millimeters tall. I'm going to check the box on that spec. Yeah, 145 millimeters, that's very, very short for a 120 millimeter cooler. They've really set this back and down. It's a really interesting design. It hangs down uh, pretty, pretty far and back. I guess if you had a really, really big motherboard heat sink, maybe it would get in the way. But um, as it is, we think that CryoRig, I think the CryoRig has really nailed the, the uh, clearance here. By the way, as I touch this, I noticed there is a little bit of horizontal play here. So I'm not worried about it, but there's just a tiny bit of play, which means that those screw holes are just a little bit bigger than the screws. But that's okay. Um, I'm going to snap this fan on. Now, if you have a really small case, this kind of operation can be tough because you might be right near the top of your case. I'm using a very large thermal take. View 31 case. It's a case I strongly recommend and it has clearance for all sorts of coolers. Uh, this being a very small cooler, so this is not a challenge, but if I had a small case, it's really hard to get your hand in here and snap these fan clips on, but not a problem here. I'm going to go uh, <clears throat> lift up this case. I've got my USB cable down below. Let's thread it through. One of my the, I'm not going to be able to see this on camera, but I'm just attaching the USB cable to a USB header. Got one down the uh, bottom of the motherboard. And the cooler's installed. That's it. So it wasn't too difficult, but you have to be kind of mindful of a couple of factors when you're installing it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.